Hey everyone, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Uh, Mr. Mick Tareen Man. Almost. <laughs> it sounds so good. It just, things are happening today. It just sounds so, so good. Yes. Uh, happy holidays to you. This will go out sometime in the festive period. And uh, if I look weird, it's because I have a stiff neck. Oh. From carrying amplifiers around. So every time I do this, it hurts. Anyway, in the meantime, if you're hurting for some merchandise, <laughs> <laughs> go to that. Uh, go very to, good. Very go to, good. Go, sorry, it's early in the morning and we've got belt in amps. It's awesome. Go to that pedalshowstore.com. Please buy some merch. It's how we fund this show. Uh, pick you up a, uh, I don't know, seasonal reminder of why you like that pedal show and why we all love each other. Indeed. Indeed. And subscribe. Yes. Hit the button. Yeah. Cost it's, you nothing. It's free and it helps. So, uh, yeah. All right. Um, our favorite things of 2023. This, we're going to do two roundup shows this year. One will be um, a roundup of all the guests we've had because we've had some utterly stellar guests this year. So we'll do that in a separate show. This is gear focused and um, it's a bunch of categories we've put together. Our favorite things of 2023. We are going to talk about the thing you've used most, the thing that has surprised you most, mm. uh, the thing that didn't work out, uh, your absolute favorite thing. The thing you wanted to try, but didn't try. Uh, the very last thing you actually bought with cash money. Uh, and the one thing you're going to acquire next year. Very good. Nice. Very good. Nice. Um, I'm playing this Rickenbacker because this is an honorary mention. We'll come to it. Uh, all right, Dan, uh, the thing you've used most ah, in okay. 2023. Okay. So I've actually had this pedal for a while. I played it initially, I thought, yeah, that's really nice. And then other things. And then recently I put it back on the board and I shouldn't say recently, like earlier this year, put it back on the board and I've just discovered the most extraordinary sounds with it. It's the Kingsley Harlot, um, as if Simon needs more <laughs> love from us. Um, I was using, uh, I had a modded, Dean Markley Overlord and I really liked that pedal and when Simon was over we just had to chat this out and we had a play that's really great and he said oh do you mind if I have a look at it and see what's going on no, no worries I thought well while that's gone I put the harlot on the board and there's no way it is being replaced by the Overlord but it's good. the Overlord's fantastic but the core tone of this thing is amazing so just to explain Simon's uh, tube pedals can be a little bit confusing. He has quite a lot that cover similar ground. This is, is it fair to say this is like a straight up, straight down the middle tube overdrive with enough gain? Yeah. And now I don't know if this is an old version or a simpler version. He does a version of the Harlot that has EQ and stuff. Yeah. But like for me, so this thing sound incredible. Okay. So amps today, we've got the matchless going into a WGS big Tw speaker. 12L. 12L. It's the WGS EV alike, which we're not sure if they still make or whether they do or not. Yeah. But I'm having all the feels for this at the moment. And of course, the mighty Two Rock uh, classic reverb signature. <laughs> which we'll come to in a sec. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the amps together, just on their Todd, sound thusly. <laughs> You would be heard if you were playing that. I, I, that's fair to say. It's a strong guitar sound. It's a strong sound. sound. Um, the thing to notice is how dynamic this is off the pick, right? So I'm not surprise, I'm not, surprise from yeah, Simon. Yeah. I'm not going to touch anything here. I'm yeah. not going to touch anything over there, right? So this is just the harlot into the two amplifiers. <laughs>
Just is so so right. I, I so I've been using that as my main overdrive this year. Hit it with a because it's a proper valve thingy. Hit it with a treble booster, and it's just like oh. yeah, it's not overly EQ'd in any particular direction. It's not too nasal. It's not too fat. It's just a really beautiful straight down the middle. If you love the overdrive. sound of your amplifier, yeah, you just put yeah. that in front of it, and it's like. Another channel into your amp. I'm overwhelmed with it. It's going just to try, quickly try it with the strat just to give you a bit of um, light and shade. Uh, you, you, the Rickenbacker lovers out there might want to hear it with the Rickenbacker, but I think um, we'll go with the strat guitar. I'm familiar with uh, different different kettle of fish. Isn't this, that awesome? This guitar just needed a little bit of extra brightness. It's, when like, I, it's like, okay, that switch is like Strat switch. Kink. Yeah, when it's I perfect. turn the, as Strat players will know, if you don't have a treble bleed or anything else, the capacitance of the cables can roll you off quite a lot of high end. So when you turn down the volume on a Strat, just flicking that into the bright brighter, there's three bright sweating settings on it, uh, just brought out the Strat-y character. Killer, man. Isn't that great? Really, really brilliant. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the thing I've used most in 2023, is my Two Rock Classic Reverb signature. I got this amp maybe, got to be five years ago. Mm. Might even be longer than that. Um, it's been my number one amp ever since, and I use it for, I want to say, everything. Mm. I also am um, in a lucky enough position to have a TS1 as well, which I use sometimes with it, sometimes on its own for a more dumbly presentation. Yeah. But that, I've done quite a few gigs this year, uh, my own gigs and also sitting in with friends, bands, and more often than not, it's that, it's on the, that cab, actually. Yeah, it's the, it's my, f I love the Matchless, and it was my dream amp to get, but that would be the best sounds we we have on the show. Yeah. Uh, th that is always a massive part of it. It's, uh, I'm learning more and more about it as well. Yeah. I'm not going to go into detail about it today. You'll hear it all the way through the video paired with Dan's Matchless. Um, so yeah, that is definitely the bit of gear I've used the most. And I feel kind of happy that in 2023, the bit of gear I've used most is a 100 watt tube amp. Come on. <laughs> and not quiet either. Um, so yeah, uh, just endless props to Two Rock for the work they do. Yeah. Um, I, I can't see it changing. No, see it's, it really is an astonishing, astonishing amplifier. Yeah, I'm in love with it. I've got it running on a, a 112 2 rock cab, but I changed out the 2 rock speaker for an EV. Um, with due respect to 2 rock I prefer the slightly smoother top end presentation of an EV because there's so much in that amp, you can get it as bright as hell. And with all the pedals and everything that we use, just the smooth presentation of the EV, I, I prefer. You know what's really interesting about that? So uh, remember a while ago, we tried the rubies. Yeah. 
and they were just too dark. Celestine for... Alnico Ruby, 35 watt and was, Alnico speaker. Talking to Paul Stacey, I said he was recording with um, the Grossman ISO cab. Mm. Um, which was again, which was in contention for me for things that I've used a lot this year because uh, at home I, I use that all the time. And I said to him, "What speaker have you got in there?" Says at the moment I'm running a uh, an old Marshall in, a, into a, the Ruby speaker into the ISO cab. And I said, "How?" I, we, I tried it. How does it work? He said, "What that dark speaker allows you to do is run the treble and everything really high in the amp, and you're getting more signal through the amp." Yeah. Well, we've the best sounds we've had out of our Plexi have been into the 212 Ruby cab for that exact reason. Absolutely. So it's and all the about... And can do its thing. Yeah. yeah. It's an ecosystem, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Nothing exists on its own. Okay, uh, let's move along. The thing that has surprised you most this year, Daniel. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let me guess. <laughs> it's a bike. It's... <laughs> the Johnny Marr signature Jag. So... We had a Jag, a very nice Jag. Yeah, it was an American original 60s and surf green. Yeah, because we wanted to have a couple of offs offsets because it's such an important part of guitar history. So, you know, we want wanted to be able to bring them out every now and then. And I just didn't, everything about that guitar... Didn't click. Didn't click for me. I just didn't, yeah, no, just for, wasn't for me. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. So you got the same thing in a different color. So <laughs> now, I, I tell, ask me why this guitar has connected with me in such a uh, serious way. Because you prefer the neck shape. I prefer the neck shape. I pr much prefer having no binding on a Fender. You prefer neck. the simpler electronics. The, I prefer the simpler electronics, the switch, um, and I can't get past the sound of the thing. I mean, I play this now more than any other guitar. At home, this is the first guitar I pick up behind Red. Um, and of course, the acoustic, but the shorter scale length, maybe I'm just getting old and lazy, but the shorter scale length is just so nice to play. Um, and I just love the sound of it. I, ha I have put a mastery bridge on here because I was having a little bit of trouble with the, uh, with the intonation and so this has sorted that out. But man, I, I just, it's, it sounds amazing. Um, so yeah, just with a bit of, bit of reverb. And delay. And delay, sorry. Roll the tone off a little bit with this. I love it. I just love it. <laughs> it's, it's interesting watching somebody connect with a guitar. So literally from the second we put it in his hands, he's like, yep. And you have played it. You played it and played it and played it. We did a show just recently comparing the Jag to the Ricky that you've just seen and might see again in a minute. Uh, so watch that for, for more on that guitar. Yeah. It's a, it's a lovely thing. Yeah, it really is. Um, and watch our other video a recap of this year's um, guests to see quite a bit with Johnny Marr, yeah. which was the main inspiration of picking it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. They, yeah, amazing. Uh, biggest surprise to me this year, there have been a few. There have been a few. The Rickenbacker gets a special mention because mm. we hadn't really done anything with Ricks before. I've certainly never owned one. Uh, a lovely guy called Mark Kember lent us that. We'll get it out again in a sec. Um, but actually, I've chosen the UA Delverb as the thing yeah. that surprised me the most in 2023. I, I had a bit of a sticky start with the UA pedals, and I think it was down to the preamp sound in the original Galaxy delay 
Right. And I felt they were a bit tricky. They were quite hard to power. And I just, for some reason, just got put off right from the beginning with sure. the first, with the first, um, for the with the first release. They followed up with a bunch of simpler pedals, and have since followed up with even more simple pedals. Normally, I would use on my pedal board a quite a complex delay, something like a Free the Tone um, Future Factory and the uh, Chase Bliss CXM 1978 Reverb. So quite a lot of real estate, really high end bonkers capable pedals but i did a bunch of gigs this year where i could only take a small board mm. so i needed a solution for delay and reverb that was easy to operate didn't have too many options yeah. so normally dan and i would choose the source audio collider for that and we've sung that's praises enough uh over the years the del verb surprised me when we first had it on the show the buffer annoyed me um if i just play the strat a sec and i'm really hoping you're going to be able to hear this if we turn the mix down on everything, so the reverb and the delay is down to zero. If I play. Shifts the upper mids. Yeah, might be subtle in the recording, but at loud through a guitar amp, it's really, really significant, the effect of that buffer, which in this environment was like, I don't want that. What I discovered putting it on my pedal board is it's absolutely perfect yeah. with a live band yeah, yeah. because it just gives you that little kick, mm. almost like switching the bright switch on, on right. in your amp. And of course, now this is really heavily dependent with what else is going on in your rig. So here you're hearing guitar, cable, Delverb cable amp mm. in my rig because I wasn't using a switcher. You've then also got all the other patch cables. You've got all the other switches and all the other pedals. Some of which, um, actually, all of which are true bypass. So the loading on that signal is significant. So that buffer makes an even bigger difference right. when you're not using a very clean signal path. And that was right at the end. Yeah. 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 Okay. But what I found was using it with the band. Amazing. It was great, and yeah, I come yeah. to really love it because let's start with the delay, right? I'm just going to uh, give myself a little bit of boost here uh, and we'll come on to talk about this in a minute, but... Nice analog delay, uh, tape sound or analog delay. The tape is here. Sorry, that was the analog delay. Crunchy if you want it, and all that mod stuff is just available from a single knob tweak. So when I'm singing and playing, everything is really easy. There's no menu, there's no buttons, there's no nothing. In addition to that, it's got this really nice reverb. So I became completely addicted to the CXM's mm. um, room and hall sounds. Yep. The Dell Verb has been criticized a little bit for only having a mix knob, that's it. Okay. More or less. Right. And even worse, you can select those two switches to have delay on and off or reverb on and off. Right. Or pedal on and off and tap tempo. Okay. So you can't switch the reverb on, on and off. Yeah, right. On the pedal itself, at least. But I actually prefer that. So right. I've got my tap tempo for the delay, and then I literally just reach down and turn the reverb up and down as I need it. Because okay. it's at my feet. Yeah, right. Right. I'll just turn the reverb off in the two rock a minute. So there's, there's no reverb coming from the amps.
So in the set there, if we're doing the um, the Van Morrison song. Uh, a real struggle remembering the chords there. But in those well, you haven't got to play much. Those huge, that huge reverb. I don't need everything that might come yeah, from yeah, this yeah. in a bit, yeah, yeah. or something more complex. In a simple, you know, function gig or ba uh, covers gig kind of set, it does everything I want. And then just sorry, don't mean to take too long about this, but um, something a bit with a bit more feels in it. If we go for a a kind of a slappy type thing. So if we turn that reverb down, maybe just have a little bit of splash. I've, organ I've made it down to a bit of a splash. Yeah. Stick some reverb back on the amp. I'll just go for a little bit more gain. That's fantastic. Once you get, I mean, obviously any delay pedal can do that, but once you get your head around where the knobs need to be, it's almost like just bending down and going, yeah, yeah, it's quicker yeah, yeah. than going, oh God, I can't remember what preset this is, just the way my brain works. So yeah, like I say, the simplicity of the UI, some mm. of the things it's been criticized for, i.e. things that it can't do, are things that have played right into its sure. strengths for me because I have to, that reduces an option that I think about, I have to do it this way, simplicity being the mother of invention or whatever mm. that quote is. And yeah, and I, I, I stick it on my board now very happily and uh, really super happy to have it. So. Yeah, and sonically, it's what we expect from UA. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? There's this beyond reproach. Exactly, this stuff is so good. Um, yeah. The We know the energy and effort that goes into getting those sounds bang on. And it's like having an interface that is so simple. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's really great. Really yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, and seeing as we were talking about things that have surprised us most, uh, I will just say the Rickenbacker. Yeah. Uh, Mark Kember's Rickenbacker. I just wasn't expecting to enjoy that guitar quite so much. Yeah, we, so, we're uh, going to have to find a Rickenbacker to add to the t Yeah, I do have to point. sort out this though, because I just can't play it. Yeah, sure. The, the string spacing is too tight for me. But then, to be are they all like that? All the 330s are, I think. Okay. Anyway, conversation, anyway. conversation for another day. Uh, we might need to speed up a bit, Dan. Okay. Uh, the, so the, the thing that didn't work out in 2023. Okay. This is a tale of two halves for me. Right. Um, I'll go first then. All right. Mine was the Eventide H90. Okay. Tried weeks. I'll cut in a bit of the vlog I made and junked. Just no. Right. I've, I've decided for other reasons that include simplicity, sonics, uh, option paralysis, mm. impossibility of I incorporating it into any rig that I would actually use. Right. I gave up on the H90. So with apologies to Eventide and people who love it, it I have drawn a line under complex sure. uh, guitar pedals. Yeah. I'm not, it's not for me. Sure. So I had... A similar thing this year. So we were going to do a video on let's get to grips with a couple of really complicated pedals.
pedals. Mick Which was the H90. Yeah, that's why I got into it. <laughs> and then I was going to do the LVX. I did at least 20 hours, I want to say. Yeah. At least. Yeah. And and to be fair, I thought some of the sounds you got out of it. Yeah, had were, it here were, at Experience yeah, Days. Yeah. And sound, yeah, yeah. sounded great. Yeah, I didn't just give up easily. Yeah. So I had the LVX and I went to the LVX from a timeline. And what I was after was a, just a do-it-all delay. And I really struggled with a couple of things on the LVX. And similar to you, I at the time, I didn't have the headspace. Uh, it was like, I think I mentioned it to you before, it's like going from a Fiat 500 to a Ferrari. The, what the thing is capable of, and I just trying to work out, and I mean, a, a, not even a Ferrari, Formula One, and trying to work out where all that stuff is that, you know, it's like, I couldn't, I didn't have a reason at that point to dig into it. That's that, where I got to with the yeah. H90. It was, it's, I don't have a question that this pedal has the answer sure. to, is the, is the truth of the matter. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, oh, no, I won't go into it anymore. So it's like, okay, I, 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 I can't see myself with this at the moment. I'm going to put that in the too hard basket for now. So it went off. Then we had an experience day and a young chap, uh, Simon, yeah. uh, came along with his board and had, had one on his board. And I you know, said, how are you going with it? I said, I, I really struggled. And he said, well, you, you've got to play to its strengths. So, yep, fair enough. And then he, he, some of the sounds that he had, super creative, expressive guitar player. Yeah. And some of the things that he pulled out and was like, oh, okay. Because what, what I neglected was it absolutely can do, uh, it, it's, I think there's an analog delay, a tape emulation, a, a magnetic uh, thing like a, Echo rec. Echo rec type yep. thing. And these are the basis of the, the delay sounds. But what I neglected was, like for me, my standard straight, you know, straight ahead delay sounds is, you know, I'm using tape delays and, and my memory man and these things that that's my, for my standard straight ahead, that's my benchmark. And trying to get a really complex piece of technology to nail those things yeah, yeah. Is, is asking too much. But actually, what I found out was when I started using it for the things that it's really amazing at, it's like, it was incredible. So were you were able to work back from there. Yeah. Then? Does yeah. it have analog dry through? It absolutely does. That was the other thing that nailed on the H90 for me, no analog dry through. So I had it going in parallel loops and using a wetter box and everything. It's just like, no, nah, no. Yeah. Nah. So what this has analog dry through, but what it's also done, it's enabled because it, in all honesty, it's a, it's a multi-effect yeah. thing. There is so much in it, but it's enabled me to take the H9 off the board. Okay. Because it does all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. With analog dry through. All right, then. Give so, us a, give us an example of a few things that you've learned about okay. it thus far. Okay. Clearly, this is not going to be an LVX deep dive. Yeah, yeah. But so um, this is a preset that I just turned on and all of a sudden music started happening and I, okay, this is really cool. So, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to use a little bit of the harlot and turn, turn this on. So without it,
inspiration machine. It totally is. So yeah, yeah, yeah. R- running it in stereo because my, my rig is now stereo. Yeah. That's, that's, once I, that's like I can't get back from that now. <laughs> but once I started using it in a way that it, it, it and playing to its strengths, it's like, oh man, this thing is absolutely incredible. And I think that was a real lesson for me. Is like when you um, are looking at a bit of gear, I I don't believe that there is a certainly for me because I love delays, right? Yeah. And and I'm really sensitive to the tiny little bit of differences in delays. It's like trying to get something that's going to replace the the baby wreck and the memory man and my space echo yeah. and all that sort of stuff. It's like you know what. And you think that has the capacity or the potential? No, I think this has the potential. Nothing will replace those things. Right. But what? that's not its strength. That strength is it does these really beautiful delay sounds, but all the stuff that comes with it, yeah. that, you know, being able to affect the delays with, not, with pitch and modulation and uh, the MIDI is like so powerful, the built-in looper, all this stuff. What I was saying that one of the things I loved about the timeline is all those uh, other sounds that it has. Well, this takes that and just goes, whoosh, yeah, you know. So now that I've sort of discovered that actually th- those extra um, effecty delays, they a they sound so good, and because they sound so good, I'm completely inspired. Yeah. When I instead of me trying to get it to the nail my memory man it's like actually no i'm going to play to the strengths so the challenge now then is bridging that gap between uh you being inspired and being able to make it do what you want yeah that's I've, I, but bit. i've already bridged that gap and we'll get to that in a bit <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. hang on before you turn it but off I'll, I'll, i think I'll, what that needs is i'll show some this. other hang on no 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 wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. this needs this Go for it. As soon as I started tapping into that side of it, it's like, okay. Off you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's great. I've already I've already got a couple of songs written on the basis of some of the sounds in there. Oh, nice. Um, it's, yeah, really, really great. So I love, I love Dan's enthusiasm. Something that didn't work out, oh, it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, at, at the because at the start, I couldn't see. It's like, I just, I cannot wrap my head around this. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I can't get the... With with the timeline, I had sounds that were close enough, and going to this, it's like it was the same thing. The sounds were, were I get the sounds close enough, but it's like, well, why would I? Unless it's going to nail those things, why would I move on from the timeline to that that does a similar thing as far as nailing those delay sounds I yeah, love? Yeah, but yeah. actually, and those sounds are great, but it's all the other stuff. It's like, oh, okay, that's where the magic is in this thing. So yeah, wicked. Nice. Okay, next uh, next category. Your absolute favourite thing of 2023. 
Can you believe it's another delay pedal? <laughs> so, talking about bridging the gap, it's like, right, that's now that, does the looper, does all the out there stuff, awesome. But what am, what am I going to do for just a simple, straight ahead, beautiful delay sound? We did a show, uh, I think it was called Digital Delays or Why Use a Digital Delay a few months back. Uh, and you might think, right, that all digital delays are the same because the idea of a digital delay is, you know, same in, same out. But nothing could be further from the truth. Dan put a bunch of things on the board and really the standout machine of the day was the Otto Machines BIM, despite having no switch and a UI that you do need to learn a little bit. Yeah. So you have to use it with a MIDI switcher, basically, don't you? Or you have to use it with a with, switcher. With a switcher. Yeah. So I have one preset in this. That's it. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of pedal. Yeah, I've got one <laughs> preset that I'm switching in and out, but I do, I'm using the MIDI to control the, the mix level. Yeah. Right? Uh, I was doing a pedal board earlier this year for Ed O'Brien, our dear friend, and he bought in three of these boxes. The bam, the bam, and the boom, or whatever yes, they're called. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I had a play with this thing, and I just thought, "Am I what? Am, am I hearing things? This is like the best delay. I've this is, was amazing. Twelve bit, right? Twelve bit delay. So it's not like super pristine. It has a sound. Yeah. Let's just hear it a little bit, shall we? Okay. So, thing I like about it: straight delay, modulation, and tone. That's what I want from a delay. Yep. Was the, was the modulation actually on there? Yeah, so the, mo so the modulation is outrageous, right? Check that out.
a hold function. Yeah, it's a yeah. freeze. It's got a, it's like one of those freeze functions in it. Oh, and no. And it does reverse freeze and all this stuff. I really don't want to buy another, another delay pedal, but... It, okay, a show we're going to do next year is can anything sound as good as that? Because I it, without a switch, that's problematic for me. Yeah. Uh, so we need to figure out if we can find something that sounds as good as that, because that really has, has something unique. It, it, and I'm... Totally. Look, there's there's a lot of things in this that aren't amazing. Yeah, it's got a lot of MIDI stuff that that, that works. Like the the mix thing it works great, but there's no at currently there's no uh, MIDI CC message for tap tempo, which is a problem. Oh wow, that seems like an oversight. It's a massive oversight. And can you is there a, can you plug in a f uh, foot switch to do tap tempo? No. Oh. Yeah. That's a problem. So that's a problem, and but the guys at, at Auto Machines have said they're getting it done. There's going to yeah. be a software release to sort that out. So just doing it now, dear. Yep. <laughs> so it's not the perfect solution for everyone. I, I'm, oh, and Dan and I are the same on this. I'll go with functionality problems, as if the sound is good every day of the week. Absolutely. If it's all the functionality in the world, but it doesn't sound right, forget it. So for me, my delays, so these are both on my board, mm. right? And actually, the combination of the two is freaking eerie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I'll just get a, a, a BIM sound up. I have lost days. You can just keep going. To that this is combination. a spectacular sound, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's inspiration machine. Yeah, really. Nice, 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 nice. Um, we didn't say it at the start. Should probably say it now. Maybe these things didn't come out this year, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Never knowingly first. <laughs> uh, as far as TPS. Can we get that on a t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so good. Uh, my favorite thing, uh, without question, this year is new recording gear. Yeah. Um. We have just recently, uh, I'll, I'll explain briefly, a good friend of ours, Gareth Johnson, Standalone Productions, among many other things, he's the guy one of the guys responsible for the Love Bomb pedal. And Gareth's become a, a good friend. He does some um, amazing work. He's got an incredible studio. He's a, a gifted uh, musician, producer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And Dan and I were lucky enough one day to bump into him at Metropolis Studios and he showed us his place and he played us some stuff and I came out of there changed. We both did. It, I'll never forget that experience. It, um, short story, everything, well, predominantly analog. So he's got a drum room, a cab room. He's got the amazing Neve API, all those things you only ever, or that I had only ever seen really in plugins. Proper reel-to-reel -reel tape. Yeah, and he doesn't always use all of it, but he's got it all. And the, the sonic depth of the stuff he makes is just out of this world. And it kind of, I came out there going, oh, no, this is going to be expensive and it's going to take a while to get a head around. In the last couple of months, we have we borrowed some stuff off Gareth, uh, some really nice analog front end, and have since managed to acquire some of our own. And we've got now uh, eight channels of Neve up front, plus two Meris, uh, I actually... Shout out to the um, Meris 440 preamps, analog pre's. They've been doing all the TPS guitar sounds for the last two years, mm -hmm. 500 series pre's, and we still use them and we still love them. So don't want to overshadow that. The Neve stuff is different, has a different sound. And just hearing those 1073s and 1081s that we have, 
sorry, this is really boring for guitar people, but studio people, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, with nice mics, to quote our good friend Andy Wood, let's fix it in pre. <laughs> and even though you might not necessarily be able to perceive it on the end of YouTube, after all that happens, the sonic difference and depth and inspiration that it gives me personally doing mm. the work mm. is worth everything. Yeah. So when Mick was talking about uh, these preamps and, you know, upgrading to a bunch of Neve stuff, I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah fine. And I am and I was thinking... Whatever you want to do, Sunshine. Whatever, yeah. You, <laughs> you, you express yourself through your choice of preamps. Um, and I was thinking to myself... Is it really going to make that much difference? Is it? And then the first recording we did with them, it was like, check this out. And I'm like, it was, it was night and day. Yeah. And it was really interesting the amount of people that were commenting, uh, just saying, well, even on after all the compression and everything that YouTube does, it's like, wow. Yeah, because we didn't, we didn't, I didn't make a big deal of it when we started no. using it. We just started using it. Because if you tell people, people will hear it. But if you don't tell people, that's the little that says. They either will or they won't. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so just to say, that has definitely been my favorite thing. And it's not just about does this sound better than that, right? Because that is a, a it's a false dichotomy and it, it, it gets into this realm of subjectivity and objectivity. And there is no objectivity in perception of sound, right? It's all subjective. Mm. Does this sound better than that? Well, that's up to you. Does this sound different in a way that inspires you to want to use it more? Bingo. Yes, yep. yes, yes, yep. yes. So now that process of coming in and whatever it is, setting up a drum kit, having a small band in, me and Dan recording guitars, that whole process is now made simple. that comes out here is very easily captured there in a way that I'm like, great, I don't have to do any work on this. Yeah. And it's in, the sound is inspiring enough to want to do more of it. And as I said before, that is absolutely everything to me. Yeah. The inspiration. And it kind of, it loops nicely around why the H90 didn't work. Okay. And this is just talking purely personally, right? So it might be different for you and I totally get that and respect that. Uh, point of view. For me personally, the H90 is a creativity block. Sure, sure. for you. It's like, yeah, yeah. oh man, I'm going to go and get a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. Analog stuff with twisty knobs, microphones I can move around. Yeah. And it's, again, I just want to reiterate, it's a personal thing. It's not necessarily universally true for everyone. It means that the work gets done. I play better. I feel better. Everyone around us has a better time. Yeah. And the creativity is then, well, I don't want to say unbridled, but it's not inhibited to the same level. Because that answered a question that we had. Well, the question, uh, the, the thing I had was, I know this can sound better. There you go. Just to say that we use it in conjunction with all our UA gear. This hasn't replaced the UA gear by yeah, any yeah. stretch of the imagination. In fact, if in, in some ways the UA, the UA gear is an enabling all of that to be as good as it can be. Yeah, totally. So it's all, it's now become a system that's that's together. Anyway, I could talk for months about it. I appreciate this is a guitar show. Yeah, but so it's the same thing for me. And to be honest, if Simon hadn't come along that day on the the uh, TPS Experience Day, I don't know if the LVX would have been back on the board. But as soon as I heard someone using, the, using it in the way it was meant to be, I was like, oh, wow. And suddenly yeah. it was like, and then all these these possibilities and things started firing in my head. It's like, oh, I need okay. to be shown the way. Yeah, absolutely. But if unless yeah, yeah. sometimes you do need that that thing, it's having that question. Yeah. It's like, and is this going to answer that question? Yeah. yeah. So Brilliant. we'll see. It's it's a voyage of discovery. As always on TPS, we've learned in public. We've made our mistakes in public. So we'll keep doing it. <laughs> Oh, no. 
to rock. Mick, Mick, this is the ghost of your brain, present and future or something. Anyway, you forgot to mention the Harmonious Monk Mark II, which came out this year. Mick. <coughs> I've just had the most terrible dream. We forgot to mention the Harmonious Monk Mark II, because we thought it came out last year, not this year. Oh, thank goodness it was just a dream. So you know what to do, go forth and monkeyfy. Okay, a short category this one. The thing you wanted to try but didn't, i.e. the thing that we're going to try and put our hands on early next year. The yep. thing that you wanted to try but didn't, Dan. Dr. Z. A Dr. Z amp. A Dr. Z amp. Any particular one? Uh, the the Mez 18, Okay, I think. Two uh, two oh, that, no, this, the Stingray. Okay. Um, I think... An well, EL84 one, basically. An EL84 one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really keen to... Uh, we've had... What's the guy gone fishing? Um, I'm sure going to miss her. And he plays that solo. Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley. <laughs> you and said gone fishing. I was thinking of Paul Whitehouse and Bob Mortimer. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the tones Bob Mortimer gets out of his Dr. Z is incredible. But the, listening to what Brad Paisley does, and I've always, I've loved... <laughs> Brad nice. Paisley on a Ricky. Nice. <laughs> but I've always loved <laughs> AC30s for country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And hearing what Brad Paisley does through the Dr. Z that and those tones he gets, it's like, I really want to get one out and get the AC30 up and get a Dr. Z and the matchless and go, okay, this is some different. What are we period, doing? But, but, okay, um, we will do that early next year. We'll put our hands on a Dr. Z and, um, and do that. Yeah, perfect. Cool. For me, it was the TC2290. Mm. TC uh, Electronic, now owned by um, Music Group or whatever they're called, Behringer and all that. Um they have done a finally done a pedal version of the fabled TC2290 delay. They did a plug in version, yeah, years ago. Well, do you remember really when great. we were there in Denmark really, and, and they, they showed said, us? Check this out, yeah, really cool. So now there's a guitar pedal, and I'm I'm itching to try it because it's um, it remains elusive. We will get our hands on a proper real one and uh, and do the comparison, yeah, cool. So that'll be cool, okay. Um the very last thing you actually bought, Daniel. Okay. Uh, there's a few things that I've bought, and I can't remember the exact timing, but I'm pretty sure this is the last thing I bought. So I've been looking for one of these for years. This is the first issue small stone phase shifter from Electro Harmonics. So this is uh, an early 70s or a <laughs> mid 70s version. I just, so, I, I just want to touch on a little peek into Dan's brain there. Let's let's take a little leap between this <laughs> and this. <laughs> yeah, perfect. There you go. Uh, I was now I'm, I'm honking lows today. So years ago, when I was 
doing a, a rig for Stephen Wilson. <laughs> and he asked me if I if he could borrow, um, if I had an old small stone to borrow. And I said, yeah, yeah. So I, so I lent him my other 70s small stone, the one that came after this. And he's like, yeah, great. And he toured with it and loved it. And he said, actually, the one that I wanted was the first version because he was told by, I think it was Jan Ackerman, that this is the one to use, especially on Mellotron. And I'm like, yeah. And up to that point, the, the, you, know, you don't see many of these. The last one I saw before this was when we were in Japan and there was one, but it was in bits. Right. Right. So I bought that, put it all back together and I gave it to Stephen as a present. Oh, wow. Right. Um, but someone had taken it apart and, you know, completely messed with it But because I knew that was the one that Stephen wanted. But I've been keeping my eye out forever. Anyway, my brother was over um, this year and we're, we're walking through Sirencester and there's this guitar shop in Sirencester. It's, they sell like guitars uh, and homemade jewellery. It's the most random guitar shop I've ever seen. There was one of those in uh, St Ives in Cornwall. Right. Yeah. It's, that sold all sorts of stuff, and then you'd see like a sixty-three something or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and you know, they have, you know, you like court guitars and the, the sort of yeah, yeah. The, the entry level things, and and then uh, you know a few bits and pieces that people have traded in. Anyway, that no was there, and I like uh, just uh, took Darren in there and have a look around and see if there's anything that he liked. And I saw that, and I'm like, I didn't even plug it in. I got to be honest. Um, Did they know? They presumably they knew what it was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It so it was reassuringly expensive. It was reassuringly expensive. Yeah, I thought, yeah. you know, fair enough. So different font. There's no markings around the the circle. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it does one thing, and this is the thing. Well, let's does. hear it. Magic. That is killer. Magic. Okay, so it looks like we might have to do a phaser show then. Because the question on my lips, probably on yours as well, is, well, does it really sound any different to uh, any other phaser? Yeah. They, it's so interesting, right? They all... The this, small this stone, they, they, they use a different sort of approach to the design of this. And, it, man, it's just... I've always... You know, the, the other uh, vintage small stone I've got, it sounds great. Um... This seems to have less mids, sort of more of a hollow, soupy mm. thing. But gee, it's good. It's really good. So yeah, the last thing nice. I purchased with large amount of fun vouchers. Was that? Okay. Uh, I, I bought a bunch of stuff all at the same time, roundabouts, and I can't remember the exact chronology of it. The thing we're going to look at is what you've been hearing all the way through this video. So we'll just do a quick few sounds. It's the Tube Overdrive Distortion Plus. Plus. I just had to check uh, by Brelliot Pedals, and right. I met Johnny Elliot, and he came in. He's the, he's called Elliot. Pedals are called Brelliot because his wife's name is Brr something. Anyway, um, we'll get to Do that. Do you Brr? Uh, sorry, take Johnny. Elliot. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Johnny. We'll get we'll get to that in a sec. Um, however. Around the same time, and I'm going to mention this because we are about to do another show on it. I also picked up the Lando Butter Machine because mm. I'm a Lando fan. And that prompted the question to say, well, hang on a minute, we really ought to get an original 
SD9, mm. which I managed to find on Reverb and have also uh, sent some questions to Susumu Tamura, who is the designer of the SD9 and the TS9 and the TS0808 and oversaw the whole 9 series for Ibanez. And so to really round that out, uh, Mr. Tamura also designed the SH9 by TWA, which is the Scott Henderson version. And as regular viewers will know, we also have an Analog Man modded SD9. So this is shaping up into quite a nice show, which we'll do. Yeah, because I have questions about this. So many questions. Yeah. Joey was here last week, Joey Landreth, and he, we plugged him into all four. Okay. And I have to tell you, change my opinion of this whole thing mm -hmm. in, a, in a big way. Okay. So oh, can we get Joey in for the show? Well, I didn't want to say that, but I am hoping we can get Joey in to do the show with us. Okay. When he comes back, we've got a very small window. He's on tour. He's going to stop in here on his way back through, and it might be that we can do it. Okay. So I wanted to mention those as a sort of, um, as a special mention. Uh, however, the thing is the tube overdrive distortion plus, and very briefly, right? You've got a drive section. Mm -hmm. You've got a clipping section. It's in this order. Yes. You've got a little tube, a military, little small military tube, and then you've got what, uh, what Johnny calls a recovery section. So the drive happens first, then the clipping, mm -hmm. as it would in any mm -hmm. overdrive pedal. It mm -hmm. then hits a little tube. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you can recover some low end and you can recover some gain, depending on the clipping option you've chosen. So clever. Let me just show you a couple of examples. So for the majority of this uh, video, you've been hearing a silicon clip. Right. Okay. Um, just play for a sec, Dan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set you up with two very different sounds. Okay. Just to give you an idea. Okay. I'm just trying to encourage him to play a bit softer. Okay, Sorry. Let me get the strap. Um, so you 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 got the the full on crazy clip hugeness, right? But at the other end of the scale, Mm-hmm. 
sorry, by way of very ham-fisted demo. Of taking that through. Pretty clean and boosty yeah. with loads and loads of headroom through to absolute smashed overdrive bordering on fuzz. What's really nice is you can cut the low end at the, at the front. So yeah. if you were running into an overdriven amp, for example, that didn't really need all the rest of the push in the low, you've got that 200 hertz cut. But you can then recover it after the gain section. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, I would say, like a Swiss Army knife approach to an amp-like distortion. So what it's actually doing, all of the switches and all the, the uh, diode clipping things, these are choices that the, the designer would normally make. Yeah. Right? And what he's done, he's actually saying, you find the thing in there that's going to work for you, but what you end up with is, what you don't end up with is, is something that you're trying to EQ in a specific way to sound like something. What you're actually relying on is the characteristics of the different clipping sections, yeah. um, depending on the sort of guitar you're using, uh, what you know, whether you want all the bottom end in the front so it will react like a fuzz, yeah. or whether you limit that and recover that at the end. Exactly that. that. It is what I, brilliant. What I like it for the most, I'm so I'm completely covered for overdrive pedals, right? I, I've got overdrive pedals coming out of my ears. The thing that I'm always searching for is a really good amp-like push sure. thing that's that's got an edge to it that's a bit distortion. Mm. So the Hertz, Leighton Lemon, yeah. love that. Thorpey Warthog, yeah. absolutely love that and will use that. Sometimes Hudson Broadcast. Mm -hmm. This is in that category okay. and does it in the most beautiful way. I really want Paul Stacey to hear it. Yeah, okay. I think he's going to love it. Yep. Um, so yeah, it was just a real surprise, and I love the. I, I just like the way the things are tweakable. Yeah. So uh, Johnny did say he would he would send us one in the normal green finish. This isn't the normal finish, by the way. So check them out. Brilliant amps. Uh, link below. And yeah, that was the last thing I, I bought. He came, so he'd sent it in, and we hadn't got around to it. Mm. We get so many pedals sent in. Dan, people sort of maybe think that Dan and I sit around all day playing pedals. We don't. And I, ha I just hadn't got around to it. So he said, do you mind if I come and pick it up? And I said, well, if you're going to come and pick it up, plug it in and talk me through it. And then halfway through, I said, will you sell me this one? And he's like, I can, what? I said, it's got to be this one. Though. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't, yeah, absolutely. And he's like, yeah, sure. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Really brilliant. Yeah. Oh, cool. Happy days. Happy um, days. Okay. Uh, that's us. There's one more thing to finish off with. Uh, one thing you're going to acquire next year, Daniel. Actually, sorry, lastly on the um, Todd. Rolls off the tongue. One of the things I like the most about it is that sound we had earlier with the Del Verb with a... When you're doing the the splashy thing. Yeah, with yeah. a with a slap so, back, little bit of grit off of humbuckers. Amazing. So if you need to refresh yourself with that, that's what I absolutely love it for. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, one thing you're going to acquire next year, Dan. It's been a year of discovery for me. Hmm. Uh, like all years are. This year in particular, there's a couple of things. Um, I don't know if my... I don't know if my guitar playing has changed or I'm more responsive to other things. That might be what's happening. It's all, you know, It's a journey. But one thing I am going to acquire in 2024 is some sort of dumbly inspired amplifier. So we did a show. If you go back to the Digital Delays show, I know it's hilarious. It's hilarious. But if we, if you go back to the Digital Delays show that we did, we used Mix uh, TS1 Two Rock as the center amplifier in a wet dry wet rig, and that was the preamp. Everything was was going through that. The the outside pair, we're only using, um, it was a stereo power amp. So I was using the preamp of the two rock, was driving all three speakers, basically, uh, all three power sections and speakers. And It was 
old school wet dry wet. Old school. Well, wet, not dry, quite wet. because the the wet still had dry in it. But anyway. yeah, but that yeah. There was a lot. Of Essentially, effects an effects loop approach to wet dry wet rather than being split off the board. Yeah. So. Some it's flickering, Dan. Are you noticing that, Hades? Some it's flickering. Maybe it's my brain. No, I don't see any flickering. If I hit the deck before the end of the show, okay, thanks very much. <laughs> thank you, Lizeman. Thank you, ball boys. Uh -huh. um, when I heard that, I had a, a a preconception of what that amp was going to sound like, and I, it it has haunted me since I played it. And it's a sound that I want to have. I mean, I still love the matchless, and that will still be, you know, a if not the main amp, a main amp. Mm. But I am going to have a look at something in that vein because it's a sound now that it's like I I didn't think a Telecaster in that would work, but far out it was mind blowing. It was so beautiful and responsive, and it's like okay. I'm going to get one of those this year. Okay. And in, in, include it from the arsenal. Dan is going to get a Dumble Style Amplifier then. Be, the comments will be full of Dumble Style Amplifiers. And there's a lot to choose from. You should try. Yeah, yeah. Because unusually, Dan normally hates channel switching amps. Hate too strong. Normally would avoid a channel switching amp because one is so severely compromised. But that you, was the you thing. You like though. both channels in the, that amp. The clean was just... I've never heard an amplifier that wasn't compromised with switching between two channels yeah. before. Or, or even that you just vastly prefer yeah. one or yeah, the yeah. other. Yeah. It's a better way to put it. Yeah. But I was blown away by both channels equally. Mm. It was astonishing. I thought, okay. Yeah. It's a good machine. Yeah, it's a good amazing. machine. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. Uh, thing I'm going to acquire next year. Um, I've been watching a bunch of guitar players recently. Jack, I don't know if it's Rutch or Rouch. Um guy with a beard plays a 335 or a, some kind of gibson es model always sounds unbelievable joey landreth and also our friend jim walsh has uh, turned me on to a guy called adam levy adam right. levy yeah levy levy apologies if i've got that wrong he's also a two rock player and a few other people um book of Ack, all these really tasty super tasty players and the thing they have in common is a really nice vintage ES type guitar. Okay. I have a beautiful 335 that you have heard in this video. I've replaced the pickups in it with um, Lollas and it vastly improved that guitar. In the video, people were like, yeah, I can't really hear the difference. I, I will tell you the difference is before that, if I ever did a gig on the guitar, I would only ever use the bridge pickup and couldn't use anything else. Mm. Just too woolly. Since then, I've done quite a few gigs on that guitar, been all over the guitar, mm. pickup-wise, and had a very, very responsive and nice time. So yeah. that's been the real world difference. Sure. However, I hear these fantastic players playing the older guitars, and they sound even lighter, even more vocal, Okay. even more. So I, I'm going to see if I can figure out a way of getting... I can't afford it. I certainly wouldn't be able to afford an early 60s one or a late 50s one. They are telephone numbers now. Sure. But you can pick up mid to late 60s ones with a few issues for borderline sensible money. Okay. So I'm going to go on the hunt for one of those. And there is one that I am hunting for currently, a specific one. And quite a lot of that's going to go. Yeah, okay. Because what happened when I got this was I've been searching, 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 searching. Found it. Found it. And... Again, you might not perceive it over YouTube, but the difference between this guitar and all my other strats is colossal. I'll never forget the first day I heard you play it. And I didn't know what it was. You were in here and I stood outside, I was about to come in and I heard this unbelievable guitar sound and I stood outside behind that door for a couple of minutes because I didn't, whatever was going on, I did not want to interrupt <laughs> it. It was flipping majestic. And then I opened the door it was you on that blue fuzz face to yeah. rock. And it was... And, and whether you... Crazy. That's kind of you to say, mate. Whether you objectively can perceive any difference, much less care, because we're all different, right? Yeah, yeah. What it does to me is the same thing as the recording gear. Okay. 
it makes me want to pick up and play yep. and it makes me inspired to play and i fully accept that a great deal of that is psychosomatic but if you think you can beat the psychosomatics in your brain all the psych all the psychotherapists in the world are out of business <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it so i, I think i'm going to i'm going to explore that see if it's possible i've got a big birthday coming up in march i'm going to be 50 yeah man so um what are we doing uh, Party. I'm, I'm going to spend every penny I've got on a vintage guitar. Uh, you can do what you like. <laughs> no, we will have we'll, we'll have a bit of a drink up. But um, so yeah, so a bit a bit of that stuff's going to go, and I'm going to pair down to this that keep the gold top, maybe a couple of other things, and focus my life on a handful of astonishing on the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It may end up as folly. I might not like the guitar. Who knows? But, but it'd be that's, a really interesting thing goal. to. It's all in. It's all in. It's all in pursuit of the note. Yeah, that's all I want. I just want to be able to go. And hear the hear the sound I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very good. We'll see. I love we'll that. see. Should probably shouldn't have said anything because that won't happen. But or it will take like four years like this did. <laughs> it's the journey. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. But that was awesome. Yeah, nice one, mate. Yeah. Nice little recap. Obviously, there's loads of other <laughs> great stuff we've played over the years. These were the things that sort of first came to mind. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Fair, yeah. We hope you've enjoyed that. We hope you've had a great 2023. Um, we know it's been, uh, it's been an interesting year for a lot of people. Mm. So sending you all the good stuff from us. Hope it's been awesome. Hope your 2024 is even more awesome. And uh, yeah, you know, long may this shenanigans continue. <laughs> Ridiculous charade. <laughs> yeah, we're, we we don't take this for granted. We, we know we're very, very lucky boys. So um, yeah, 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 thank you all yeah, for yeah. watching. Thank, thank you, you all for subscribing. Thanks to anyone that's gone to that pedalshowstore.com and grabbed yourself some merch. It is the main way we fund the show. Um, and there are, you know, the DNM drives and uh, our harmonious monk and can I can I just say that when Dan and I do things like buy ridiculous vintage guitars, it doesn't come out of TPS money. Indeed, it's, it's personal. Okay, yep. so if we're not using that money. We're using the money to keep the lights on and do everything else that that is needed. The, Absolutely, all this stuff comes out of personal money. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, so thanks to everyone. Thanks to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you to our preferred retailers. Thank you. Uh, in UK and Europe. Anderson's music of. Yeah, that's the captain's like. No, it's just. <laughs> I'm just expressing myself in music, man. Don't oppress me. Uh, yes, I've, that, and I think you were saying in Guildford in Surrey. Is that what that lick was? I make the guitar speak. You do. You do. What does it say? Put me down. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, and our mates in Australia. <laughs> uh, it's Pedal Empire, Brisbane and Queensland. Uh, I'll be, I don't know when this is going out, but I'll be there on the 21st of January. I'm going to have a... December. December even. No, this will be after that. Oh, okay. So I hope you enjoyed the evening on the 21st of December, anyone that came down. Um, yeah, but thank you to those guys. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you all in the new year. Yeah, happy new year. Happy new year. Happy right. new year. Cheers, guys. Uh, take it easy. See you soon. Goodbye. Bye.